What do you think the blue dots that make up the star on the left might have in common with the orange dots that create the circle on the right? Would you believe me if I told you that the average x and y values are the same for both charts? Maybe, but what about their standard deviation and correlation? Those are also the same for both graphs. And these 12 charts are part of the Datasaurus Dozen dataset and they all have the same average value of X and Y as well as the same standard deviation and correlation, emphasizing the importance of plotting your data instead of only relying on the summary statistics. In this video I will show you how you can calculate the summary statistics very quickly for all different types of the dataset and I will show you how to create an animation of the chart images including the summary statistics. If you want to learn more about data visualizations and animations in R and put a smile on my face, make sure to subscribe to this channel as there is new content coming out every week. Let's get started with the R code. After installing and loading the Datasaurus package, you get the different datasets in a long and in a wide format. The datasets were created by Alberto Cairo and Steph Locke and I link to their articles in the description below. In the long format you have 142 values for X and Y for each dataset and then they repeat for a total of 1846 rows. And in the wide data frame you have each dataset split for X and Y values and then 142 rows and 26 columns, two for each of the 13 different datasets. Let's first calculate the summary statistics. As always there are different ways to do this in R. I will go through different ways very quickly and you can always pause the video and try to code out for yourself. The tidyverse approach at the end I think is the most convenient. So you can always index the individual columns of the data set with the dollar sign and then wrap the function around it. And this way you get the average x value of the Dino data frame, y value, as well as the standard deviations and the correlation between x and y. There is a call means function that goes through all of the columns of the dataset and gives you the average for each value. If you only want to get the x values or the y values and not all of them at the same time, there are different ways you can achieve that. For example, with the sec function, you only get the even or the odd numbers that you can then use to index the data frame. So if you select only the odd numbers, you will only get the x averages. You can also use the grab function to look particularly for the y values in the data frame and then index the y data frame for the values that contain y to only get the average y values. Within the grab function you could also say value equals true and then you get the actual names of the data frame and not just the position where the y string occurs. You could also use the string detect function from the stringer package where you look for the pattern x and then you get trues and false and also the average values. You can make use of the apply function where you provide the data frame and then for margins specify that you want to go column wise and as a function give the mean or standard deviation to get different values of the data set again. Within the apply setting you can also have multiple functions attached and then get mean and standard deviation for the different data sets in one run. And with the transpose function and data frame, you can already get a good summary of the average and standard deviation. If you want to get the summary statistics from the long data frame, you can make use of the aggregate function from the stats package, where you target a certain value of the data frame and then give it a grouping variable by which it should produce the averages. So now we are looking for averaging based on the data set variable the x values and you can achieve the same within aggregate with the formula argument where you say calculate x values versus the data set and give me the averages but as i said i prefer the dplyr or tidyverse method the most if you have the data frame and you filter for the dino data set you can use the summarize function to produce the average of x y and the standard deviation as well as the correlation in one go so here you have these five summary statistics. And if you want to achieve that for all of the different data sets, all you have to do is to use the group by function on the data set column and you get the same five summary statistic results for all of the different data sets in one go. I'm going to save this last value that was produced by R in the summary stats data frame because we are going to use these values later for the animation and annotation. Let's next look into how to plot different data sets. Because once you know how to plot the data, you only need one more function to animate it. This chart is generated by filtering the Datasaurus Dozen 
data frame for the Dino data set and then pipe this into the ggplot function, do the aesthetics mapping for x being x and y on y, and then adding the geom point. It of course also works on the circle. And if you want to plot all the different data sets at once, you can exclude the Dino one to get to the data source dozen, include the color variable for the data set column, add geom point, choose a different theme that's clearer. So if you would plot everything from here, it would look like this including all the different data sets in one plot, which is not very helpful. But with facet wrap based on the different data sets, you get this nice split and visualization of the data source dozen. And then you can use the zoom function to enlarge it. You could make it even more cleaner if you remove the legend by adding theme legend position equals none. And with the theme void, you get rid of all of the coordinate systems in the background and the axis labels. Now let's turn these into an animation. We create the basic chart and save the plot in a P object. Then we add to this P object the transition states function that you get after loading the ggAnimate package. In this function, we explain that there is a datasets column included in the ggplot that we want to use for transition between the different states. So it should go from one dataset to the next, from Dino to stars to circle, etc. The transition length is two and the state length is one, which is just the ratio of how long it should spend on the animation itself, so the transition from one state to the other, and how long it should remain on the final state. So now that it transitions between the different dataset states, the transition length to state length ratio means that it spends twice as much time in the transition itself than in the actual state. And the wrap false means that once it's reached the last dataset, it stops and doesn't merge into the first one. So that's what you see when it moves to the X and then there's no transition going to the first cloud. So now I want to add color and I call the next animation NM2. And once you execute on this object, there will be some rendering time. So once you want to load NM2, it will have some moments to calculate the different transitions. And there's an estimated times for the frames per second it's creating. So this might take a while sometimes. And then it loads the frames and starts the animation in the viewer panel. But what you notice now is that it actually doesn't transition between the states, but just jumps from one to the next. And the reason is that it's not considering the different data sets to be part of one group. To fix this bumpy behavior, you have to tell it that they are actually part of one group. And you do that in the ggplot, the aesthetics mapping, group equals one. And now after the rendering is done and the frames are created, you will notice that it will change into a smooth transitioning from one data set to the other. If you want to add text to your animation, you can use the GD title function and add it to the animation you already created. And if you use closest state in squirrely brackets, you will now see a title with fixed text that we provided and then text representing the current state of the data set. And with closest state, it will mimic the data set it's closest to during the transitions. Now that we have the data set in the title, we don't need the legend necessarily anymore. And now I want to add the summary statistics in the top left corner of the animation. You remember that we created the summary stats data frame that has all the different data sets with their summary statistics that are almost identical to the second digit after the dot. And now I want to extract the values of the five different columns and paste them together in one long text and have each of the values separated by a line break, which you get with the slash n expression. So for that, I use the paste zero function and within a mutate, I create a stats text column and save this in a text data frame that not longer holds the five columns from the summary stats data frame, but only the data set and the stats text. And you can do this with the select function at the end. And then this is the result, a table with 13 rows and only two columns, one being the data set and one being the pasted together statistics text. But now you notice that this number is unnecessarily long and we should probably round it. So I use the round function within the expression and four represents the digits after the point. And I think for average, this is enough to include in the animation later. So this plot you already know how to produce. That's everything from here to the geom point. And now I want to add geom text, but use the text from a different data frame, which we just created. So the text df is the data and we filter this for only the values associated with the Dino data set, put it on position 2100 and label is the stat text column. So this then produces the following chart, which kind of worked, but it sent us the text here. So we have to do a little adjustments. 
and for that you can use the horizontal just, the H just and the vertical adjustment within the geom text and align it left horizontally and top vertically. So now 2100 is here and you have it aligned top and left. And now we can use that in the animation. So everything is the same as before. The text is now produced based on the text data frame. We use a different theme, get rid of the legend and use the transition as before. And now you can see as the animations change, you have the text associated with the summary statistics here as well. If you don't want the summary statistics to have the same color as the graph, which it has because the original color was set within the ggplot function and then the geom text function just assumes this color to remain the same for the data set, but you can override it within geom text by setting the color to a fixed value as black and then it doesn't change and stands out a bit better. There's one more way how you can put the summary statistics on the chart and that's in the subtitle I want to show you next and for that you have to merge the text data frame that holds the summary statistics text to the original data frame and you can do that with left join and simply say pipe the data source dozen so the original into the text data frame, so this one, and by the data set column, merge them, join them together. And since the data set column is the same in both, it will produce the following updated data source dozen. So now attached to the data source dozen, you have the stats text column that holds the summary statistics with the line breaks. And now you have to be a little bit careful. We won't do the geom text anymore, where we use an external data frame to get the values for the summary statistics, but we will extract the summary statistics from the original data frame. And to do that, we have to use a little bit of a difficult expression that will be in these squirrely brackets again and I will explain what it is in the console. Just as a preview this is how it's going to look. It will move the geom text from this corner into the subtitles. So the label of the main title changes by closest state and also the subtitle. So imagine the closest state is Dino. You can ask if the data source doesn't data set currently is equal to the closest state and then you get trues and falses and this vector we can use for indexing. So you could extract only the data where this is true. So here's the rows where this is true and this is the column. So now you would get all four different columns, but we only want the last one. So then with the fourth column, we target the stats text column and we only want one value to be displayed during the whole transition of the current state. So with another indexing after that, we would get a character string with what we want to display here. You could also immediately go into the data source dozen stats text column with this index and then use the true and false vector to extract the summary statistics we are looking for. And since we only want it once, we can index the first entry and get this. And this indexing is what I put in here. That's what we just did. And you have to put it into squirrely brackets to be then calculated and displayed as text. And I put it after the subtitle summary stats line break to look like this. One last word on how to save these kind of animations as GIFs. So once you run it, it's displayed in your viewer and you can always right click it and save as image. And then it will save as a GIF by default. And you can also use the animate function and then specify some important arguments like the frame rates, how many frames per second you want this GIF or animation to hold, the overall duration in seconds. So I have 13 different data sets, so 13 seconds is enough. You can give it a height and width in inch and the resolution. And the bigger your animation is going to be with a higher resolution and duration, the longer it will take to produce the animation. And now it takes even longer to produce the different frames because now for 13 seconds at 12 frames per second, it's going to be at 156 frames. The reason why this turned out so big is because of the high resolution I chose in the animate function. You can open this animation in your browser by clicking here. And then you can turn it into any size you want and right click on it to save it as an image. I added a few more animation options that I will describe in more detail in a later tutorial about animations. For now I'm quite happy with the result, especially compared to the earlier, more basic option. This was my first video on this channel discussing animations in R. If you found this interesting or helpful, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more animation videos in the future. Goodbye.